Hey, good morning. Welcome to Christian Life Fellowship. It's so nice to have you here joining us this morning. My name is Olivia and I have a couple of things to mention for you this morning. One, on our Facebook page, we have a survey. It is called the CLF Reopening Survey. We would love your input. So head on over and fill out that survey. And if you enter in your email, you'll be entered to win a $100 Amazon gift card. So make sure that you don't miss out on that opportunity. And Today we are going to be doing communion, so get your family together, um, whatever elements that you have around the house will do, and uh, um, that will be coming up later. We're going to have some worship and a message, and we hope that you enjoy the morning service. Oh, mm-hmm. 
John, welcome. Just want to give you a little update of uh, what's happening here at church. Wanted to let you know that we are progressing. We're making plans in order for us to be able to gather in person again, uh, maybe starting in July. Yeah, we're hoping that at the end of July, maybe the beginning of August, we're going to be putting together a, kind of a, a live watch party so that people can ga start gathering together throughout the summer. Uh, and hopefully kicking things off as we get a little closer to September. Isn't that right? Yeah, and uh, we need to buy some new equipment and test it, make sure it's all going to work right in order for us to be able to live stream and, and to gather together. So keep an eye out, watch for it, and uh, we are looking forward to being back together again, even though things might look a little different than they have. It'll be good to be together again. God bless you. Keep an eye out for emails, things like that, and uh, we'll keep you informed. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Hey, John here. I want to let you know that we're doing a whole bunch of really fun things here at Christian Life Fellowship. One of them is what you can see behind me. We're changing all the lights in the building. What this is going to do for us is it's going to free up some power so we can actually continue to do more renovations in the future. It's also going to save us money every year. And we just want to thank you for being a part of this as we just continue to push forward for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is the best part. This isn't the only one we're doing. We've also done another project and I'm gonna show you that right here. Hey, why don't you come follow me outside and I'll show you exactly what we're up to. As you can see, we're out actually in front of the building and you'll notice behind me, we've painted the outside of the building. Part of keeping our building lasting into the future is by taking care of these little things. So this is one of the projects we've done recently. Also behind you, I'll get you to spin around and follow me through. We've actually redone our sign as well. So as you can see here, we've taken our sign, we've repainted it, we've refixed it, and we made it look fantastic. See, we're, we're excited and we're getting ready for Christian Life Fellowship to get back together. I know it's gonna be soon and I know it's been a long wait, but we've been waiting for you and we're expecting you and we're excited for you to show up and join us again 
in on a Sunday morning as a big family. So thank you so much for being a part of Christian Life Fellowship and, and helping us continue to bless our community and take care of all the things that God has given us. So Lord bless you and have a wonderful day. Good morning, my name is Blair. I'm one of the pastors here at Christian Life Fellowship and we are looking forward to getting our watch party started in August. If you're still a little unsure about what a watch party is, it is church just as it is now. We will pre-record worship and the message, but you'll be able to gather together with a smaller group of people to watch it at, at the church building, probably in the ministry center, and you'll have to sign up. But this will actually accomplish two things for us. The first being uh, many of you are, are really missing seeing one another, and understandably so. It's been so long, and I miss seeing you. And, um, you miss seeing one another and allow you to gather and to see one another uh, some. And, it, and the second thing it does is we are getting ready to be able to live stream our services in September. It allows us to work out um, all the bugs or kinks and just to get to know that equipment a little bit and to be ready to, uh, to live stream for in-person services starting in September. So we are looking forward to this, to being back together. And so look for more information regarding uh, watch parties coming soon. Uh, the second thing I just want to remind you this morning, today is communion. So um, if you uh, have some bread and juice, or um, uh, please get it ready as we move into today's message, which is going to start right now. You know, one of the positive things that's come out of COVID-19 and, you know, the world basically coming to a halt for the last few months is that it's really caused many of us to evaluate what's truly important to us. And, uh, you know, that's a good practice for any of us. And, and I, I, as a part of that, I think a lot of people are asking questions about God and about faith and Christianity. And so today what we're, what we're doing is we're starting a new series that's going to take us through the summer um, where we will look at who God is and what he's like. And, uh, and that will help us um, in our faith, in our day-to-day -day life, and um, uh, to know who God is and what he's like. Now for me personally, one of the things that I enjoy in life is uh, I like fishing. And in particular, I like to fish in streams, in rivers. It's one of the things I, I love doing. And one day, um, this is back in Ontario, one day I was out fishing with, with a buddy and uh, we were on a, a river in, in southern Ontario fishing for trout. And uh, uh, it was a big long river, it was a long ways back in, into the woods. Uh, we had hiked on back and we were fishing for the day. And as happens, we got separated some, you know, he, he went one way and I went the other in, in search of fish. and. Uh, um, and at one point through the day, I, I knew the river very well. I'd fished it many times. And at one point in the day, decided I should catch up to my friend. And I knew that the river had a bend in it. And I thought, well, if I just cut across in, through the woods, I'll catch up to him a little bit faster. Um, but I wasn't in the part of the river that I thought I was. And I ended up getting a little bit lost in the woods. And I, I began to get disoriented. And I wasn't sure where I was. And, and I remember very clearly the experience uh, I had two kind of separate things going on inside me. The one was the, this increasing um, stress and anxiety of not knowing exactly where I was and feeling lost. And the, the next kind of mixed in thought was if I just kept going a little bit further, I would get to where I need to be. And I kind of feel like this is where we're at right now as a, as a, as a people, as, as individuals, as, as nations and, and the world, right? We, we feel a little bit lost. This is uh, such an, an unusual time for us. And it's almost like this mix of stress and anxiety and this idea that if we just keep moving a little bit further, we'll finally get to where we want to be. Um, and, and, you know, when, when you're lost, what is it you're looking for? You're looking for direction. You're looking for help for someone or something to point you in the right direction. And that is the purpose and point of this whole series. Um, because we, without knowing God, without knowing who he is and what he's like, we are really lost in life. And, um, and the result of that um, will often lead us into, direct, into places and directions that aren't really great for us to go. 
By the way, I did find my friend eventually. Um, I, I just had to walk a little bit further through the bush and obviously I'm still here. So everything turned out all right. But, you know, the thing is God is, is looking to help us. He, is, he always wants to help point our lives in the right direction. He is the one that, that can help us. He is the, the person that will point our lives in the right direction. And, and when you know him and when you know what he's like, um, and, and what he's not like. So when you know what he's like and what he's not like, what he wants and what he doesn't want, you, you'll be able to uh, relate to him better. And as a result, what you'll find is that your life is then pointed in the right direction. I know I, without, a, without a doubt that I'm a, better, I'm a better husband, I'm a better father and friend and person because of knowing God. But the question for each and every one of us is, who is he? Well, I'm going to start with this. I'm going to start with um, some things, um, because some of the things we're going to talk about God are unique to God, and some are things uh, that he has shared with us, some of his attributes and ways that he has, he has shared with us his creation. And so uh, just a quick foundation that we will build off within this whole series, the, the, the Christian faith um, everything that we, in the Christian faith, everything that we know about God is directly from or based off the Bible. Um, the, the Bible is the foundation uh, of our knowing God. It is, we, it is God having revealed himself to us in a written form, having used people to write it, inspired them by his spirit to, to write, to put it down, pen to paper. And, um, and so the Bible is, it, everything we know about God is either, either from or based off the Bible. The true Christian faith um, does not leave room for, um, to, to mix in other religions or belief systems or ways to God. It, 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 and that, that's from the Bible itself, that, that there is one way to know him and that is through, to know God and that is through Jesus Christ. And, and so again, we're, I'm just laying some foundations that we're going to build off. First off being that you know, the Bible is our source of truth. The second is that it, that it is Christ alone in terms of uh, how we are saved and, and know God the Father. There isn't room for another belief system or religion. There aren't multiple ways to God. There is one way. Um, and um, Because that's what the Bible teaches us. The, and the, again, the Bible is God's way of revealing himself to us his creation. It is the roadmap to life for when we're lost. So uh, one other quick foundational thing, we understand God to be three people as one God, right? We often refer to it as the Trinity or the triune God. It's, you know, just, just, those are just words that describe three people as, as one God. And this is honestly one of the deepest mysteries of our faith, where we have God the Father, God the Son, who is Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit all God, three individual people um, who operate as God, um, who have uh, a relationship with one another. They don't keep secrets from one another from what we understand and know. And, um, uh, and so when I use the word God, that's what I'm referring to, the three in one. And so, uh, you know, God is, is unlike anyone um, that, that you could know or imagine he is a one of a kind, he is unique and without comparison. So what is he like? And, and what does that mean for us today? Well, we're gonna look at two specific things today. The first being this, that God is infinite. And uh, so uh, he is limitless without end. He has no beginning, he has no end. God um, simply self exists, he is without origin. Um, in Colossians 1 and 17, it says that, that God is before all things, and in, and in him all things hold together. So God existed before anything was created, and now that what is created, it all is held together in and through him. Psalm 4, 147 and 5 says, Great is our Lord, and abundant in power, his understanding is beyond measure. So what God knows who he is is beyond the ability to measure it. You know, the fact that God 
has always existed uh, can be challenging for us to understand. God wasn't created. He doesn't have an origin story, right? That's very popular right now in superhero more, hero movies, to, to the, the origin story of, of the superhero. Well, God doesn't have one. He has just always been. He is eternal. He is infinite, um, limitless, and he has just always existed. And so, you know, grasping the nature of God, the, the nature of a limitless God, is, um, it's, I think of it like this, it would be like going down to the Campbell River and thinking, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contain and hold on to the Campbell River and sticking your hands in the water. And of course, the river rushes all around you. And, uh, you know, you, so we can grasp God, but only to a point because he is limitless. He, he is, uh, there, there is no end to him. And so th this is the first and, and, and one of the most important things for us to know and understand. God is infinite. He does not have limits. Yeah, a, a man named A.W. Tozer, he's a Christian author, he wrote this about God's infinity. And, and I love this. He says, to admit that there is one who lies beyond us, who exists outside of all our categories, who will not be dismissed with a name, who will not appear before our bar for a reason, nor submit to our curious inquiries, this requires a great deal of humility, more than most of us possess. So we, we save face by thinking God down to our level, or at least down to where we can manage him. Ouch. <laughs> I mean, uh, I hate the idea of thinking God down to where we could manage him. But I, I think we're probably all guilty of it at different times. But, and, and God is infinite. He is limitless. He always has been. He always will be. And there is no, there's no start or finish to him, right? He is, he is without ends. And, and so we must accept and receive him and understand him as best we can in that way. We have to stick our hands into the river and try and get as much of him <laughs> as we can. You know, um, one, of the, one of the names that God has revealed himself to us in the Bible is, is the name Jehovah. Now, it's, um, it, many times in the Bible, it actually gets translated as Lord or Lord God. And, um, but that, the, the word Jehovah, you can find it over 6,800 times in the Bible. And, and the word Jehovah literally means the existing one. And so uh, his very name that, that he has revealed himself to us is describing the fact that he is infinite, the existing one. Um, in one story in the Bible, when, when God instructs Moses to go back to Egypt to set the Hebrew people free because they'd been in slavery 430 years in, in Egypt. And he's saying to Moses, go back and set them free. And Moses asked the question of God. He says this, he said, who shall I tell Pharaoh sent me? And God answers, his response is, I am that I am. And that is the word Jehovah, the existing one, the one who has just always been. You see, in, in, those day, in that day and age in, in Egypt, Pharaoh's thought and regarded themselves as gods. And so God is, in, in revealing his name uh, as Jehovah, as the existing one, as Lord God, he is, he is letting Pharaoh know who the true, the real God is. And so uh, it, it's good for us to know. It's good for us to be reminded of our place, of our position. You, you know, and when I say that, God, God isn't looking to ridicule or, or demean us by making sure that we understand how small uh, we are in comparison to him. God is not a cosmic bully. That is, that's not what he's doing. Um, the, the reason that, that it's good for us to be reminded of this is because the more that we rely on God, the, the more we will experience his blessing in our life. The more we rely on him, the more we will experience his blessing. That's why it's good for us to be reminded that we need him, that it's important for us to remind or to rely on him. You see, this reminder is that, that, that a God who is bigger than we can understand, than we can grasp, than, than we can fathom, that we can imagine, this God who is infinite, who never ends, who has no limits, you and I have limits, that, that this God... <laughs> who has no end, is incredibly interested in our lives, in your life and in my life. 
Uh, This infinite God loves you. He wants to help you. In fact, the Bible says that Jesus came to the earth uh, not to condemn it, but to rescue it. God is very interested, this infinite, endless God, is very interested in us, very finite um, people. We have a clear start and an end. And God is so interested in us. He loves us so much. So here, here's what I'm going to ask you to do right now. Um, is uh, in, in, in just a second, I'm going to ask you to pause the video. And I'm going to ask you to pray to, to talk to our infinite, limitless God who wants to help you, who wants to rescue you. And, and I want you to, to tell him that you want to rely on him. I, I'm, I'm asking you to, to confess, to tell him, God, I, I want to rely on you. Um, I want to rely on you more I want because I want to live in that place where I receive blessing from you. And then I ask him as a part of this, ask him to show you areas of your life where you need to trust him and rely on him more. So just take a moment and do that right now. I'll wait right here for you. You know, um, okay, so number two is this, um, is that is that God is immutable. So God is infinite and God is immutable. So immutable just means that he never changes, right? Something mutates, it changes. Uh, God never, ever changes. In Malachi 3, 6, God says this, he says, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, the, the Israels, is, Israel, um, are not destroyed. And uh, so God does not change. You know, who he is, what he's like, never changes. He, he, um, he isn't more loving one day and than the next. He isn't less forgiving on certain days than, than others, right? He isn't less interested in you on some days than others. Um, he isn't less interested in you when you make a mess of your life as opposed to when maybe you um, perceive yourself to be following all the rules. That isn't what he's like. He never changes. He's always faithful. He's always loving. He's always good and merciful and forgiving. He's always just. He never, ever changes. God doesn't get better or worse. He doesn't change. His plans and his promises don't change from one day to the next. So what does this mean for you and I? What it really means is that we can trust him. We can trust him. I mean, have you ever been let down or disappointed by, by a friend or a family member or maybe a pastor? Of course you have, because we all have. Um, but God says this. God says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never betray you. Uh, I'll never abandon you. That's what God says. And he doesn't change his mind. He does not change. It, he, he doesn't say, well, you've abandoned me, so I'm abandoning you. That isn't how he works. He never changes, even when we change, even when we, um, you know, change our mind and move in directions that maybe aren't healthy or good for us. God doesn't change. He always loves us. He'll always be there. He never leaves us. He never abandons us, never betrays us. You see, you can't get so you cannot go so far away from him that um, that he can't find you or so far away from him that, that he changes towards you. It's just not who he is. God never changes. So whatever hardship, whatever difficulty you're facing, you know, and and honestly, this world has a lot of them, and it always has. Whatever whatever hardship, whatever difficulty you're you're facing, and and, and whatever it is that maybe is in your life right now that and it, it might seem like that things around you are changing. And because they are in our world right now. And, 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 you know, maybe some of it you like and maybe some of it you don't. Whatever it is, there, you can know a God who remains the same, who is trustworthy, even when others are failing and letting you down. That he is a God that remains the same and he will always be there to guide, to direct, to help you. One of my favorite, my favorite book in the, in, the, in the Bible is Romans. And one of my favorite verses is Romans 8, uh, favorite chapters. And I love verses 35 to 39. And, and they really talk about, uh, I want to encourage you with it because this, this is spoken about a God that does not change. Here's what it says. It says, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean um, 
He no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death. As the Bible says, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite, it, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. Am I, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither fears for today or worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. That never changes. Regardless of where you're at today, that, that has never changed. It will never change. You can build your life on the fact that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it allows us, it will allow you to trust Him. Let me encourage you today to trust Him with your job, to trust Him with your finances, to trust Him in the midst of COVID-19 and with your health, to trust Him with your relationships. You see, when you have someone that you can rely on, your heart and your mind are more settled. You're more at peace. And from there, when your heart and mind are settled, when you're at peace, you can make better decisions. You're a better husband or wife. You're a better mother or father. You're just a better friend or person. And so let me encourage you and challenge you today to trust the Lord with, with all that you have. And, and maybe take a moment and share with one another today um, what it means. What it means to you that God is, is both infinite and immutable, you know, limitless and unchanging. What, it, what does it mean to you? How does it help you to know this um, and, and to, to try and live in the understanding that God is Im infinite and immutable? So I'm going to pray and then we're going to have communion in just a moment. Father in heaven, thank you so much. Thank you, God, that, that you are without limit and that you never change. God, may we truly grasp May we, may we, God, understand more and more, even though we won't ever fully understand, but God, may we, may we know it. May we have eyes that see and ears that hear it, how limitless you are, that there is nothing, God, that stops you. And God, may we live in it. May it build our faith. May we have a, an expectation of you um, that's greater and greater. And may we see more and more of your kingdom here. Because, God, you've made promises that your kingdom, your will is to be done here. And you never change. You, you don't break your promises. And so, God, we look forward to that. And we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So just take a moment and, and get your, uh, your juice and your bread. I've got mine right here. And, uh, and we're going to celebrate communion. You see, and this is what communion is. It's this moment of, of celebration where we remember and celebrate that Jesus gave himself. He gave his body, um, you know, it, which is represented by the blood and he gave, or by the bread. He gave his blood, which is represented by the juice. And he did that to restore and to reconcile our relationship with God that was broken by sin. An infinite, unchanging God, you know, took on our mess, our mistake, and made it right because we couldn't do it ourselves. Jesus, you know, death on the cross, giving himself for us in our place is a convincing display of God's love. And, you know, we just, I just read you the verse in Romans 8 that talks about being convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God. This was a convincing display. You see, Jesus, you know, God's love for you is not dependent upon your behavior or, or it's not even dependent upon if you'll accept it, acknowledge it or receive it. He loves you, even if you don't want to acknowledge it, even if you outright reject it, He still loves you. Now, He wants you to accept it and to receive it because that, that is what will rescue you. That is what will change your life by accepting and receiving the love, the forgiveness and mercy of God into your life. And, and so here's what I'm going to ask, just before we take communion, if, if you decide to do that today, if you decide to 
to accept and receive the love, the forgiveness of God, I'm going to ask you to go to our website, which is clfcr.com. And, um, and, and from there, you can get in touch with me and let me know that you, you've made that decision today. Um, and I would love to connect with you and help you into your new relationship with God. So here we are in this moment of communion that where an infinite, unchanging God is represented for us in some bread and, and wine or juice. That this God that has no limits is allowing us to understand Him uh, by these very much everyday uh, elements, things of life, that we could grasp um, how much He wants us to know Him. And Jesus, on the night that He was betrayed before He was crucified, He's with His disciples and, and He's describing what's about to happen in terms of God making a new agreement, a new covenant uh, um, between Him and humanity. And um, where what Jesus is about to do is going to deal with our sin problem once and for all and, and allow us to be reconciled to God. And, and Jesus takes the bread and He breaks it. And He says, this is my body that I'm giving for you. I mean, God, a limitless God offers Himself to a limited people. He says, so here it is, here's my body that is gonna be broken for you. It's gonna be crushed and beat and pierced. And I'm doing it for you so that you can be made whole. And, and so as you hold the bread, you know, and it, it just represents him and what he's done. And I'm just wanna encourage you to take a moment and reflect on how good God is. Goodness is one of the things we're talking about later in this series. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Let's eat it together. Thank you, Jesus, for your body. In the same way, it says that after supper, Jesus took the cup and uh, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And um, and, and, and then he, he tells us that whenever we do this, whenever we remember it, we are proclaiming his, his death until he comes again, because he rose from the dead. And, and so it's this moment where we understand that the God whose promises and plans never change, he is coming back. He is going to return someday. Could be today, could be a hundred years. I don't know, but I look for it. It is a hope that we have in our heart and we trust him that he is his plans and purposes will not change so as we as we drink this juice together it is a reminder it is a celebration of this re new relationship that we're able to have with God because of Jesus sacrifice let's drink together thank you Lord thank you Jesus thank you for your broken body Thank you for your blood. Lord, we love you. We worship you. And God, we ask that we would truly know you. We would know you more and more. Thank you for your body and your blood. We love you, Jesus. We worship you. God, we pray that you be with us in your name. Amen. God bless you. We're going to worship some more together this morning. Have a great week.
Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's so nice to have you. Don't forget to go and fill out our CLF reopening survey. We would love to hear your thoughts on that. And you'll be entered to win a $100 Amazon gift card if you enter in your email. So we hope that you have a great rest of your Sunday.